All right, guys, so this time I wanted to clean off my workspace. I cleaned off the cake plate that I use as a rotator table for the sculpting. Off to the side here is a bowl that I keep the slip in, and on top of that, a plate with the majority of the tools I use the most frequently. Spray bottle is here. Wire cutter is here. Serrated edge right here. I don't know what this is called. Scraper. Scraper's here. And, yeah, you can see her. Um, the first figure in Three Sisters, One Fro, because I'm done working with her for right now. Don't need to finesse her or anything at this stage because a lot more is going to happen with her fro. But what I am going to do, because the vent is across, it's up high, and it's a dry environment, I'm just going to keep her moist. So I sprayed her down, and now I'm just going to throw a plastic bag over her so that she doesn't dry out too much and become crumbly and unworkable. So you're gonna have to forgive the plastic bag. So now what I'm getting ready to do is start on the second um, figure. So I have some really moist clay right here, came out of the bag. I'm working from a 50 pound bag and I've used about uh, half of it for that one sculpture, I think. And this, I'm just going to put this plastic bag here and sort of just, cause I don't wanna get my nice clean new table all dirty. Now this table doesn't have the support to really mush this all together like I need to, but like I said, it's still soft and workable, so I'm not interested in doing that much. I forgot what they call this. There's a name for it. I'm just gonna call it kneading the clay for right now. But from what I've heard on YouTube University, it helps to join the particles together, the clay particles together, keep them uniform, and that'll help keep your stuff from cracking. Who knows? There's science behind all of this stuff, and I've never been one for science, which is probably why it's going to take me a lot longer than most to fire and finish a lot of successful pieces because I still have a lot to learn. I need a mentor. I have a mentor, but unfortunately, I guess I, I feel like I need a mentor that's available to me right in this very second, and that's not doable. My mentor is one of the best artists and sculptor named George Gatson, and he is just moving into his studio, so waiting for him to get everything set up to his liking, and then I will be there more than he cares to think about, because I'm, I'm a lot for him to deal with. I have to really temper my mouth around him. He's a very genteel man, a very good man, and I can't wait to work with him again so I can ask him questions as I'm going along. So this is me just packing the clay down. I'm going to call it trying to eliminate aeration, air pockets. Oh, that's loud. I don't want to do all that first thing in the morning. Normally what I do is I have a, um, a long rectangular board that I place in my lap and I take and I pound this on that board so as not to make too much noise because my son sleeps late and I don't want to be one of those annoying neighbors so I don't bang it on this table because like I said it's a small L-shaped table that I purchased and it doesn't have a lot of heft to it so it's not going to absorb the shock of taking and slamming this down like I would on the board so you work with what you've got and you do what you can so this is how I'm packing this little clay temporarily and now I'm comfortable with moving that plastic I'm fine so off to the side here, hope you can see it yet. Yeah, that's the pile of clay that I keep very, 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 very moist for building. And I'm gonna have to take a peek at her real quick. Cause I know what I have in mind, but I haven't sketched anything out on her or anything. So I am still very much freestyling. And what I'm going to be doing, this is one part of a three part sculpture. If you've been following this journey with this particular work, then you know that already. So now I'm ready to move on to the second part of the sculpture or the second element in this sculpture. So I'm wiping off some of that moisture that occurred on the desk when I sprayed her because I don't want her hands to get too soft. But I do want to sort of determine how high I'm going to make the next one. Yeah. And this is the last bit of clay that I have left from that 50 pound block. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. I don't know if you saw how clean the table was when I first started the video, I hope you did. But um, all that's about to change because this clay dust gets everywhere and the dry clay that crumble gets everywhere. So I'm just breaking off a few pieces out of the original bag of clay. Don't know yet what I'm gonna need. So we'll start with that. I'm gonna try to keep it cute for y'all in this video and wipe things down a little bit so you don't feel like you're in my junky mess. But here we go. So like I said, trying to plot out the next chick in my head. She's going to have a different physical makeup, different physique than this one. This one is a thick sister. She's going to be slender but hippie. And I know that I want her taller than her, a lot more curved, and her head is going to be right about there. I'm just putting together a makeshift clay armature or clay example to show you what the dimensions are going to be of her. So she's going to be 
I know that looks like shoulders, but it's not. It was supposed to be her head, but I'm not trying to really manipulate this clay like this. I don't know if you can see, but she's going to have a deep curve to her back. She's going to be seated also and sitting, you know, in a kneeling position, but sitting back on her legs. So based on this alone, I think I have enough clay to start. So I don't know. I don't know how to, how to begin. I think I'm going to begin with the bottom part. So I'm going to hush now while you just watch. I'm probably going to have to stop at some point and Google some reference photos about this pose because I'm not exactly sure how the feet would be. I feel like they would be tucked under this way. That's what I feel like. So I'm just going to manipulate it that way as a just in case. I'm not worried about this side as much because it's not going to show the same way because she's going to be like this. That's sort of the angle she's going to sit at. So that inside part is going to be pretty much concealed by the third figure. So I'm going to roll this a little. I'm rolling this a little forward so that it will sit the way I want it to. So I was just smashing down the bottom of the clay by doing that. Like I said, got to work on that foot because I'm not sure and I'm going to have to see how the foot would sit in that position. I'm going to take my serrated edge tool, just score that a little bit. I know you didn't see me scoring any place else because it's not really, um, I don't think it's necessary right now because the clay is so malleable and it's nice and moist and it's, you know, it's connecting to itself nicely. Like I said, these are things I think, not that I know, two years feels like doing clay for two months or practicing sculpting for two months, especially when you don't have any on the spot guidance. So. I just do what I think I can. What I think is going to work best. Taking the serrated edge and scoring it again. I need to pull this a little more forward. Not for me, for you guys. Because I'm trying to keep just the right angle and keep it in the frame. In a way that you don't miss what's going on. And that you don't see a whole lot of me, because I'm very camera shy. I'm doing this just to compress the clay, try to keep it from having a lot of air pockets. Okay. I don't know if any other sculptor does this, but I don't like to see dry areas occur and breakage on the outside. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. 
I should have shown you before I smoothed it over. But there are little areas where it looks really textured, and I feel like that's because the clay isn't solidly joined and nice and smooth. So I wet it and then just smooth it out so I don't see that. Now that doesn't mean that in the inner recesses that it's smooth. It could be plenty of air pockets there, but I just, I can't see, personally, I can't deal with evidence on the outside. So, I don't need that much, so I'm just going to use my serrated edge tool to crop off that part. And you use your, you know, different tools for different things based on your needs. Now it's being used for the right thing, <laughs> which is this. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of slip on here because these are two bulky pieces and I don't want them to separate. So you see I took the plate off of my bowl, always keep the slip nearby, lather it on generously so that when it starts to dry and the clay starts to shrink, it'll still, it should still be okay because it's been worked into the grooves and you make your solid connection. This is where it always gets messy for me. I'm gonna take this tool to work some of the clay down and join it to this bottom part. It's messy. Now at this point, I need to be able to start spinning and observing how this piece is shaping up. So I'm gonna move this clay from here, sit it on top of the towel, I know that towels suck up moisture, but that's not the biggest deal. That's why I've got the spray bottle. All right, so now I'm putting her here. This, whoa! <laughs> Y'all got to hear my cartoon. Whoa, it's the saddest thing. Uh, but anyway, putting this up here, and you can see where I'm pushing down and joining the clay. Pushing down on this part, slip and coming out all over the place. That's fine. That's what I need it to do so that I know that these connections are tight. Pushing it down, joining it to that bottom piece. Pushing it down, pushing it down. And you can see I'm spinning as I go. Because it just, again, helps me see what is this shaping up to be. So remember how I cleaned the table off all nice and party? Yeah, that's about to go to hell because here we go. I've just scraped this residue onto the edge. It's just in one area, so the table might not return to looking horrific all that soon, but it's, it's, it's going to happen. That's what happens. So I'm pushing this down just to make a base so she doesn't topple over again, like you saw a minute ago. And actually, I need to go ahead and add something to this other side because that's going to keep happening. So I'm taking and rolling a tube of clay. I'm going to take the serrated edge and just get in under there, cross hatch and scrape. I'm not going to use slurry. I'll just use water. So I just hit that with the spray bottle. And now I'm just going to tuck this in using this tool and bring it up to join it and it will become one with this bottom part because I need her not to topple over while I'm working. And this is what I'm considering excess right now because this can, this can always be removed but I, I need her to have something to sit on for right now so that she's sturdy. And I need another piece. Again, because this is more than likely stuff uh, clay parts that are going to get trimmed right back off because it's too much and it's not necessary to the design, I'm not being careful with this. I just need to make a structure. All right, so now because of this, she's sitting uh, the way I need her to, and she won't fall over again. Now. I'm just creating the area where her legs would meet because again I need to have some idea at this point of how this is going to go. Now having this slender torso might be a problem but I don't feel like working or create working with or creating any armatures for these pieces so hopefully it'll be okay. I'm gonna add a little more in here because that'll help with the stability. You can see how narrow she is. She's very slender. I'm probably gonna have to prop a piece up here to keep this from just caving in on itself so I'll do that now. And again I'm not refining, I don't know what's gonna be taken away, so I'm just adding chunks of clay to serve their purpose in the moment. 
when this clay starts to harden and I'm concentrating more on really finessing the form, I can take all of that back out because it will have hardened enough to be able to stand on its own. So see, that needed a little support in order to be able to hold itself up. So here you figure is the indent of where her thighs would be. And I'm doing the same on the other side. Pushing in, scraping it forward, pushing in, scraping it forward. Pushing in, scraping upward. These is, these, this is the clay that I wiped off onto the edge of the table. I love these softened clay bits because you can just go and pack them in where you need them so easily, like right here. And it's so malleable that it's just a pleasure to be able to have exactly what you need and sock it into place really quickly and see what your sculpture is turning into based on the idea that you have in your head. Dig again, pull it away. Dig again, pull it away. Just shaping the thighs, that's all. Which is probably an exercise in futility because I don't think I want her nude. So there's not really a reason to be doing all of this if I'm going to lay a dress over it. But I think what I'm probably gonna do is put her in like a mini skirt. The other one has a full dress on. Let me cover her again. She'll be drying out at this point. Switching tools, because I want that, the one that I told you has a spoon-like concave. See it? Very shallow, but it's perfect for pressing for me, pressing into place. If you're observing, you're probably wondering why I'm not using an armature for this particular figure, especially because I want the curve to be so dramatic. And the reason for that is simply because it's going to have a support system all its own, and the support system is the other sculpture. So oh, hopefully I can lift this without a problem. I've got to take this tool to get it up off of the base because it's wet, so it's, it's just sticking, and I need to be able to move it right now. So I have to go in and unseal it. So, basically what's going to be happening is she's sitting next to her like that. So, she's even going to be a little further out because they share an afro. So, this support is going to be backed up by, once I extend her afro out to meet hers, it's going to have a resting spot. So, once that deep curve happens, it's not going to just be suspended in midair. It's going to lead up the think of her body as like a tree branch. And this tree branch is going to connect to the stronger base of the tree. So that all, it always has that support. I did not make her tall enough. I wanted to make her much taller. So proportionately, I didn't do her correctly. And that's okay because the great thing is I've got the structure of the pose almost there. So I know now that what I'm going to have to do to get the proportions I want. Remember, she's the slender one. The other one's the thick one. And she's also the very slender, very tall one. So what I'm going to do is serrate all of this and bring it out a couple of inches more. And I'll build backwards from that point, but I need for her to look much lankier than she does right now. I'm sorry, I keep moving out of the camera frame. I gotta forgive me, this, this video is new to me, you know? So what I'm doing is serrating this edge too. I'm gonna put a little bit of slip on this knee part. I feel like it would become vulnerable. Probably won't, but still, why take the chance when you can fortify it on the fly like this? So boom, right there. I'm joining these two pieces together. I'm holding this, pressing inward. I see the slip coming out and I'm just pushing that up into what already existed. She's gonna have to become thicker on the sides. Right now, as you can see, I'm not using any tools, just going in with my hands. Pushing, 
sealing those pieces. And that's why you shouldn't be like me and start adding the detail immediately because as you can see, if you're not a seasoned professional, so much can change and it's just time wasted. But I'm working quickly, so it's not a big deal. There's my son walking past. I probably only saw his hand. That's fine. Love you. You gone now? He's downstairs? Okay, have a great time. And remember, all of this is getting hollowed out, too. So this thickness that you're seeing in her thighs right now, I mean, the thickness is going to remain, but the clay that's supporting the thickness won't. This will definitely be hollowed. Nighttime, you know better. Let's see, that was not a joke. Pulling more clay out of the bag that contained the 50 pounds. This is the last of it. I've got another 50 pound block of clay, so you don't have to worry about me at all. At all. We will see this through. That's right. Scraping off onto the edge there. Just pressing it in to make sure the two pieces are good and united. Clay is joined together solidly, and I haven't left any huge gaps between the two. I could do a little more finessing that way on this side. And I'm gonna. So there's that. All right, this video has gotten long, so I'm going to stop it here, take a little break. And we'll come back later and build up on this a little more, build up on the torso, make her taller, that sort of stuff. So, see you in a few. Peace.